Okay, so if you have an inert body, let's just say we have a, a pole, it has a center of mass. And as long as that center of mass is on top of the support surface uh, and the center of pressure is underneath the center of mass, this can stand up, okay? But if, if we lean this pole over, the center of mass is now, it, it, it points the vector through the center of mass, uh, the gravitational vector through the center of mass reaches a point outside of the support surface, and that will now fall over. Boom, down it goes. So the first thing that you think about is we have a center of mass, and it's a, right, just above the belly button, just behind, uh, it's behind the, the, it's in the middle of the body. Okay, and, um, and, and that's the center of mass uh, that is going to be on top of the support surface. And the support surface in a standing individual is the area that is described by the outside of the two, two feet. And so right away, which is easier to do? To stand with your legs apart? your two feet, say two feet apart, or to stand with your feet together? Which is, which is easier to do? Well, to stand with your feet apart because the support surface is so much larger. So as I stand with my feet apart, I can put my, my center of mass anywhere over here and it's really, it's, it's just gonna, it's still gonna be over, um, the, the center of pressure will still hit the support surface. Whereas I, if I stand this way, if I go the, if I just go over there, I'm going to fall over, which I just did. Okay, so um, it doesn't take much. The gravitational vector through the center of mass has to hit outside of the support surface. So, but I'm not strong enough. But there are people that can lean way over there. People in acrobatics, um, and well, how are they doing that? Well, they're using muscle force to enable them to do that. So the, um, uh, before we get to that, let me, just, let me just remind you. So this is, a, this is an inert pole, but we're not inert poles. And we have, we're going to worry about three uh, joints, the hip joint, the knee joints, and the ankle joints. And from our center of mass, the gravitational vector is going to pass not through the center of each one of these joints. And each one of these joints is going to have to have some adjustment in order to stay upright. So there has to be a little adjustment at the hip because the, the vector, the gravitational vector, passes just behind the center of, that, uh, of the hip. It passes just in front of the knee and just in front of the ankle. And so each one of these is going to have to have an, a, uh, a, a strategy to oppose falling down. For the ankle, here's the, here's the uh, gravitational vector. It's going to take the, the, the legs forward. And so you have the soleus pulling, extending this ankle joint keeping the legs from doing this and, and extending them back upright. Um, there are, the, the way that this uh, uh, works in the knee is mostly accomplished by ligaments, the ligaments of the knee. And, and in the hip joint, this is mostly accomplished by the iliopsis and the iliofemoral. Okay, and a large part of the, of the work of standing is done simply by this ankle joint. All right. All right. So this enables us to stand for long periods of time, and we should be able to stand for long periods of time. Now, even as we stand and we appear to be standing still, we have what is called postural sway. And what that means, and we've known this for hundreds of years, is that if, if you just measured a person, they would, they have a sway that, I'm exaggerating this, but there's a sway that goes like this, all right? And what happens in, in, a, in a sort of broad strokes uh, conceptualization is that at every sway, reflexes are elicited 
that then feed forward to modulate the sensitivity of the reflexes that will then uh, will next be elicited. So you're always the the way that the postural circuitry works is that with the help of the cerebellum, there's a continual uh, modulation of what the ref how sensitive the reflexes should be and how much of a response there will be to any perturbation from the desired uh, position. The important point here is that posture is maintained even without, even before there is a, a frank failure of posture. So you're trying to anticipate and you are able to anticipate the, uh, the possible failure and you guard against it. So again, an example is if I want to uh, pull on, 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 on a lever, um, before I do that, if I just, if I am a robot and I'm just gonna pull on a lever, I'm gonna fall backwards with that momentum. As I pull that force, the force that I produce is enough to take me backwards, right? I'm gonna accelerate backwards. If I simply hold something out, and this is, um, this is something, I'm not sure I can do it right here, I'll try. So, so if I hold this out, I can hold this water bottle, which is mostly full. Um, I can hold it out and I'm still standing. Now, if I am standing next to something, I'm gonna stand, I'm gonna switch my hands. So I'm gonna stand here so that I can't move, I can't shift to the right. Because I know, I happen to know, that I will unconsciously shift, shift to the right before I hold this uh, water, bo water bottle out to the left. If I'm unable to do that shift, I'm gonna fall over. So usually you wanna do is you wanna stand next to a wall so you really can't shift. Um, so we'll see if this works. So if I do this, yeah, I'm gonna start to fall over because I, I wasn't able to shift enough to the right to balance out um, uh, that postural challenge. So the point being that you don't, you're not aware of this, but you think, you think oh, I'm gonna press a button and that needs my lateral corticospinal tract. Well, you're right that pressing the bun button does need your lateral corticospinal tract. But before you do that, you send a message to the ventral corticospinal tract to say, get ready, make sure that when, you know, when the button is pushed that, this, that I'm not gonna fall over, okay? So you're gonna proceed the, the, the target action with a postural adjustment that is gonna prevent bad things from happening before they even happen. Now that is not to say that you you are not also going to react when you when postural balance fails. So there are failures, and you will be able to uh, to react to those as well. But most of the postural challenges, you uh, prevent them before they ever happen. That is that is the beauty. That is one of the beauties of the nervous system, and we do that not just with motor systems, but we also do that with homeostatic systems. Um, we we prevent bad things from happening. Uh, we anticipate things, and really, the only organ that can do that is is the nervous system. Okay. So here's another um, example of anticipatory postural adjustments. It's a little more of a conscious one, one that that you you can easily be aware of, and that is when you get out of a chair. Your here's your 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 center of mass is over here. The vector is going to push is gonna fall somewhere here. Here's your support surface. It's not gonna to work to, to walk, to, to just stand straight up. Um, and what you do is you, you move your center of mass forward before you stand up. This still is gonna take um, a, a lot of muscle force. And so uh, the, the final thing I'll say in this video is that th this is a very applicable piece of neurobiology, this is in, in fact the essential uh, guide to all sorts of core strengthening approaches, such as Pilates. You're, you're basically trying to use your muscles to keep you upright by throwing your center of mass outside of your support surface and saying, okay muscles, 
contract and be strong enough to keep me upright even though my center of mass is outside and 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 so you know i'm not i'm i'm whatever strength i am i'm not as strong as as these incredible acro acrobats they can put their center of mass way outside and still stay upright um but us mere mortals you know we have to inch our way outside um, that is the, that's the, uh, the basics of, of Pilates and all these other core, core strengthening exercises. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to talk about the actual postural tracks that are used.